Hey guys, earlier this week I posted on my Instagram story on uh, what questions you have for me and I'm going to pick a number of questions to answer them in full detail to help you out or if you're curious about a certain topic. So let's get this thing started. So guys, I'm going to be reading the questions off my cell phone and you're going to see the questions posted on the screen. Uh, so we'll, we'll start knocking these babies out. So daily improvement asked, I want to be a firefighter. I already have a good paying job. I want more, but he's scared to fail. Well, daily improvement, thank you for submitting your question and concern. And I can tell you right now, and I've touched on this a lot on my Instagram stories and whatnot, that you do not want to live with regret, right? Sometimes, not for many, uh, but some money is more important. But if you don't feel driven anymore, if you don't feel like you have purpose, then you're just going to go through your life working for the dollar then eventually when you get old and you look back on your past and what you have done, the one thing that you thought first was like, hey, yeah, I made some decent amount of money. Of course, that's something that we can all be proud of. But then you start to regret what you were passionate for, which was to be a firefighter. So I'm the type of dude that do not live with um, regret, right? I refuse to, and take me for example. I was in a full-time SWAT team. I spent 10 years on the Chicago Police Department. The last five was on a full-time SWAT team. So half my career, 20 years is a real full retirement. I retired early because I wanted to chase my passion, my, my next purpose, which is we go home. If I tell you online, oh, tomorrow's never promise, chase, chase your greatness, get after it, fuck the comfort zone. But if I don't sit here and live and put my foot where my mouth is or put my money where my mouth is, should I say. You know, I'm just a, a fake, a front. So I'm living that fear you're talking about. I left a two paychecks a month uh, job, insurance, uh, a promise of a pension to chase my dream, my passion of being an entrepreneur and taking we go home where I know it will be. Just think about that for example. That to me is super scary. I'm literally going into the unknown. Like the future is unknown for, you know, what I'm about to embark. At least in my job, I knew no matter what I did, I still had that steady income. Now it's on me, right? So you go chase your dream. Go after what drives you. Because the last thing you want to do is wait until you're old and gray and you're going to live with regret. And that's the one thing uh, this nurse who wrote this book is five regrets of the dying and one of them is that, that they wished they didn't live the life what others expected of them, that they really chased their own path. So I, I hope you do. If this is something that you really want to do, you're going to have to sit there and ask yourself these questions. Am I going to later down the line really regret my decision, decision of not becoming a firefighter because I've aged out? Or are you going to be okay with it? And that's the answer that only you can know. So look deep inside you, look yourself in the fucking mirror. You already said that this is what you want to do. Are you going to do it? Or are you going to sit there and fucking talk? That decision is on you. All right, so the second question is by Colin. Colin asks, police academy starting up in a week. Mental preparation going in, question mark. Well, Colin, welcome to the biggest freaking uh, circus in the world. I know you're far from being on FTO but you got the first ticket kit on front seat. So when you pass the police academy, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so going into the police academy, man, trust me, I know, I've been through three, fucking three, right? So the first one is the most nerve wracking, obviously, because you're doing something that is unknown, that you don't know, and this is new territory for you, right? I don't know if you have prior military or not, if you are already exposed to the stress, the structure, uh, the discipline that comes into serving the, your country. I mean, if you already have that, you already know what to expect in terms of uh, what they're gonna do to you. They're gonna put you under stress. They're gonna uh, put all these responsibilities on you. And they wanna see if you can have stress, stress management, think it through and make the right decision. 
So if you already been through that with the military, you understand, but I'm gonna talk to you like you haven't been to the military, that you're just a civilian now wanting to serve your community, which God bless you. Uh, it's an honorable profession. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. It's one of the best jobs in the world. There's very few jobs out there uh, that when you go out there that you can make a difference and save somebody's life. Your decision, the things you do out there in the field is life or death and you can change somebody's life literally. And I've, exper I've seen it and I've experienced it firsthand. Preparing for the police ac academy mentally. Now understand it's not gonna be easy, right? They're gonna test you on law. They're gonna test you on firearms. They're gonna test you on defensive tactics. They're gonna test you on all that, and especially now that police officers are under the microscope, right? We're wearing body cameras and everything like that. They're really gonna test your integrity and everything you're about. So my thing to you is, you made it this far, man. Think about this. You took the, you decided to become a police officer. You looked for the department you wanted to work for. You applied. You got high, You know, you went through the entire process, and now you got the conditional offer. They gave you an academy date. Be fucking excited, dude. That's my that's my uh, mental preparation for you. Is it gonna suck at times? Absolutely. Are you gonna have to wake up early at times? Absolutely. But in the end, this is something you want to do. Enjoy it. It's like once in a lifetime well for me three times but if, hopefully this is just your once in a lifetime and you get to go out there and you get to experience the police academy you're going to meet some friends in the class and you're going to have instructors that you don't like and there's going to, you're going to have instructors that you like it's it's just like that you know when you're going to school just enjoy it know that you know you're, you're going to be put through a lot of stress they're going to give you a lot that they expect you to handle come in there hungry come in there willing to learn don't fly under radar you know i'm not just gonna try and say kiss somebody's ass don't don't do that either but put out 110 percent every day when you graduate the police academy i don't know which department you applied for and how much training they're going to give you afterwards some departments the police academy is it so take it very seriously because somebody's life is going to be on the line yours your partners the the, the people that you swore to, uh, to protect and, and serve on top of that Enjoy your, enjoy it. Enjoy the fucking journey, bro. It's gonna be great. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna fuck up a lot. You're gonna get smoked. They come in there with a great attitude every day. You know, a lot of people I've seen, like in my class, I've seen students, my classmates who halfway, you know, in the beginning, everybody's bright eyed, bushy, even though they know they're gonna get smoked the first day or, you know, go put through that stress phase, right? Cause everybody has to go, through. you know, they get jaded halfway through. They're like, oh man, this sucks. I gotta wake up at like four o'clock in the morning. Man, you're getting paid to do the, one of the best jobs in the world. You're getting paid to do the job that you volunteer for. So come in there with a great attitude every fucking day, no matter how much it sucks. Because those time shall pass. And only hard people stand at the end. And work to be the best police officers you, you can. Learn the fucking law. Learn the use of force, right? But at the same time, have fun. I wish you the best. Please contact me. Let me know how your journey goes when you go out there on your FTO after you graduate from the academy. But until then, bro, get it, get after it. J Tactics asked me, what MOS did you go in as? Well, buddy, the only motherfucking MOS. 11 Bravo, one Papa, which is uh, airborne paratrooper. So I had to get that option 40 in my contract. Uh, at the time it was RIP that I went uh, went through and uh, now it's called RAS, but I went in as an infantryman. And the reason why I chose to go in as an infantryman, because I wanted to fight. You know, uh, as I told you, I told stories many times through podcasts, how I found uh, my passion of being a, a ranger was that uh, it's just crazy because I was always a pretty athletic kid. I always wanted to go out there and be out there and play in the, in, in the field and, and just have a good time and get my hands dirty, you know? My mom used to always have to call me in when you know the, the sun goes down. But uh, I remember one day, you know, I was sitting there in my on the couch at, in, the, in my living room and my mom's best friend, son, he's, he was a, a lieutenant who just graduated from ranger school. So at the time we had something called a VHS. Now, I don't know if a lot of you guys know what a VHS is. I'm, I'm probably dating myself. Before DVDs, before Blu-rays, before those discs, they had v these cassette tapes that we had to rewind, fast forward. Well, uh, they the mom gave it, sent it to my mom, and my mom is like, hey, yeah, so watch this. This is what her child went through. And mind you, I didn't know at that point what an army ranger is, what the fuck is that? And so I popped it in, and it was like ranger school, uh, you know, 
there's like, like a hundred something uh, soldiers going in trying to become commandos and I watched the whole entire thing and I was like, holy fuck, this is something I want to do. So at that time, internet connections suck ass. We had something called dial up, so it wasn't fast at all and there wasn't a lot of information back then to look on the internet about army rangers. So what I had to do, like anybody should nowadays, is do their due diligence and do their research. I went to Barnes and Noble and I started reading on the ranger lineage. I started doing, uh, you know, looking up the army rangers, their, their history, what they do and whatnot. I was like, this is something I want to do. Fast forward a couple years and you know, I'm finishing up school is when 9-11 happened. And when I when that kicked off, I was at my sister's shop and I remember walking in and everybody was like quiet. I'm like, what the fuck is going on, right? Everybody's like staring at the TV. So I looked up, I saw the tower and the plane hitting the first twin tower. And let me tell you guys, that struck something in me. I was like, I'm gonna go fight for my fucking country. And I'm gonna be a fucking, the, the, the fastest way that I can get there in special operations is being in the Rangers. And I knew I wanted to be an infantryman because the infantrymen is the ones that get there and fucking get in the fight, shoot motherfuckers in the face, as cliche as it sounds, but boots on the ground actually doing direct action hits. So that's when I decided, at that time guys, I was 19 years old, right? So my mom, I was like her favorite kid, and my mom didn't want me touching the military. She's like, oh, typical Asian mom, oh, you should be a, a, a dentist, you should be a, a lawyer, you should, you should be this. So I snuck away and I signed at that time, it was the war was already kicked off, right? It was like 2003, uh, early 2003. And so the war already is like happening. And I was like heaven sent to that recruiter. Can you imagine at wartime, you're trying to look for young men to go fight a war? You know how hard that is? Some kids be like, ah, yeah, no thanks, dude. And I just came there knocking on the door and like, hey, what's up? You're like, hey, I'm, I want to be an army ranger. And that guy's looking at me like, oh, wait, what? He's like, yeah, I want to be an infantry. I want to, I want to be an infantryman and I want to join the ranger. He's like, yeah, 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 sit down, sit down. Dude, he, he, I was like, some. it was like, imagine somebody gave somebody a fucking ribeye steak and they're like, yeah, this is like served to me. So, but anyway, that's how uh, I chose my MOS of becoming a uh, infantryman and uh, a ranger, a little, little back history. All right, now question number four, this is from Oli93 and I, see, I don't know if it's a girl or a guy, so, I apologize. It says starting FTO next week. Any advice? Yes. I have some fucking advice for you, Oli. All right. Check this out, man. First off, congratulations for passing the police academy and earning your badge or your star. It's a very proud moment. I remember that myself. And uh, man, there's like, there's tidbit moments in your life that you look at and you think back like, oh man, that is so cool. I don't know if you had your mom, your father, your girlfriend or your wife or whoever pinned your badge. That wasn't that so cool. I mean, guys, for the rest of you guys who are in the process, in the pipeline of becoming a cop, I, I trust me, that's one of those moments you won't forget, right? So anyways, FTO. Yes, look, check it. I like, I, I, I'm not trying to be a dead horse, but I've been through three departments. So I worked with literally 12 FTOs spanning three departments. So I got my fair taste of how everybody does their thing. And that's the one thing you have to understand is you're gonna be in a car with a senior officer. He or she might be squared away. He or she might not be squared away. And that's one of those things that is like, man, it depends on the size of the apartment. It depends on the uh, what the foundation of the apartment is. I mean, is it a squared away department? They, they like training, they, they believe in that, or is it one of those departments where I had a, an opportunity to work for where it's more relaxed and, and some coppers just don't give a shit, right? So it's a really a luck of a draw to you on who you get. No matter what you who you get as a field training officer, understand this, like him or not, like her or not, you're gonna learn something from him. You're gonna learn what you can apply when you become an officer on yourself. I don't know if you're riding solo, I don't know if you're working for a, um, a big metropolitan department that you're gonna have a partner. Either way, you're gonna develop your skill set as a copper from what you learn from these FTOs, right? They ask you to do fucking paperwork, do fucking paperwork. They ask you to do something, don't roll your eyes, don't be one of those fucking young kids nowadays that we see coming through the academy fuck that this job is serious lives are on the line you understand it you raise your right hand some people fucking forget that you have to be disciplined enough to know that hey this job i might not come home from 
my and I have to be sharp. So when you go in there, it's serious, right? You you can shit. The, you got to read your FTO. Some are like they'll 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 like you know talk shit or you know talk to shit with you. Some FTOs are real stern. They they won't even like they'll treat you like a fucking newbie where you did you sit in the car, you do all this, you tell you what to do, you, they choose where to eat. You don't even have to. You can't even decide. Like I said, but on your end, what you can play on is your attitude. You know, dedicated you are and how disciplined you are. And I hope you are all all those that you're looking to be a better officer tactically, law lawfully, like learning the law even more with the FTO, learning how they handle, deal with suspects, deal with the citizens and whatnot. Learn all that. This is your chance to learn. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask them. Like I said, I'm not gonna lie. There are some fucking dumb questions. I've heard some goddamn dumb questions out there, right? But trust me, if you have something you want to ask, ask. Right, it's just going to be another uh, information tidbit in your Rolodex that you're going to use later on when you get out there. You're a new guy, new gal. Shut the fuck up. Put out the work. If they ask you to do something, fucking do it and do it the best of your ability. Learn the streets. That's the most important thing. They're going to drill you on where you are at all the time. So when you're driving, when you they let you drive, make sure you fucking pay attention on what what direction you're going northbound and you're on for example Halstead and you're about to approach the intersection of Peterson you better fucking know your your streets because they can play the game of hey I've been shot where the fuck am I and you're sitting there you're bullshitting with him or hell her and you're just like oh shit you don't want to be that guy or gal go in there sharp learn your streets learn the law if you have any questions don't be afraid when it's time to do the work and you're, the law is backing you up. You're doing everything lawfully to put hands on something. That's the other thing. A lot of people get scared of like, oh man, this is right. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm following the letter law. It's telling me I'm justified, but I'm kind of back offish. No, man, you are in the realm now of you're gonna deal with so many different types of individuals out there. You're gonna deal with people who respect you. Then you're gonna deal with people who fucking hate you. They're, you're gonna deal with people who want to kill you. And the one thing is, even me being a 14 year veteran before I retired, like I've dealt with people where I knew in the back of my head, like I can tell this person's a good person, but I still have to be on my cues. I still have to do my tactics correctly. I still have to search good. I still have to make sure the handcuffs are on right. I gotta make sure that I'm covering my partner. He's covering me and you know, all this stuff. So uh, you're gonna be expected to do a lot of paperwork that you learn from the police academy. So they're gonna look for you to do that. So square squared away your police report writing. That's another thing. Uh, people think like, oh yeah, catching the bad guys and, and doing this is, is you know, where they, they you're gonna get them in jail. True. But your police report and how you write it is, is gonna guarantee how solid your case is. Enjoy your time. I wish you a long, successful career and be the best police officer you can fucking be and then go out there and do whatever else you want to do in the department. All right, so here's the next question. Andrew stated and asked the question. He says, supplements are clutch. Thank you, bro. I work really hard. I'm fucking passionate. Shorts are rad. Definitely the hybrid active flow shorts guys. I'm telling you it's gonna change your fucking mind when you put them on I was beforehand a non liner wearing dude, right? I was like, oh freak. I hate mine but after trial and error and Making these shorts. I freaking love liners like you don't have to wash another uh, uh, two garments So you're not washing your underwear and, and your shorts anymore You're just not just washing one because it comes in one Trust me on that. Try it. Hybrid Active Flow Shorts is dropping this Thursday. 15% off for VIPs uh, for the first hour. And everybody else, the public, is on Friday. So then he says, psych to see joggers. Hmm, joggers. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. Joggers, probably for fall. Hooded sun shirts. So here you, got, here you, here you go, Andrew. This is all I got to say about the apparel side. Uh, this year is my first year as a full-fledged owner of this company. I'm not saying I wasn't before, you know, but I had my, my SWAT job where it was, it took priority and I was only able to dedicate 40% of my time into Weagle Home. But now, since I've made the decision to retire early, I can dedicate 100% of my time, effort, and everything into this organization, right? So. 
like I stated, expect this freaking apparel line to really blow up this year. Not just for the men's, but for the women. We're doing everything. You know, you get ready to saw that we're doing gym bags. You know, I'm working on a bunch of things, guys. Trust me. I'm working very hard. I'm only sourcing the best material. And you guys are just going to benefit from it. Because who am I making it for? To be honest with you, I'm really making it for me. And I'm the type of person that only wants to wear nice stuff. Not saying I'm bougie, but I train for so long in my life. I know a good pair of performance shorts, shorts, shirts, hats that when I went out there, I'm like, okay, I like this fabric, but you know, this company didn't do this right here. I wish they did this, blah, 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 blah. But now I am able to design the shorts that I want that makes sense for the type of tactical athlete I am and you guys. I'm telling you, stay tuned. This is just the first three drops for men and women and we are just gonna build upon that. So we're gonna do two things right. We're gonna give you guys the best fucking supplements and we're gonna give you the best apparel possible. All right, so this is the last question I'm going to take. This one's by G Lifers. G Lifers ask, any update on the training facility in Katy? Yes, we are looking very hard for a facility and we have a couple of contacts that we're working on. And once you guys see it, you guys will understand why I, we're taking a little bit more time in finding the right location. What I'm gonna be building is something that I wanna train in, that you guys will see and be like, okay, this is a badass fucking place. It's not a CrossFit gym, it's a functional, gym for tactical athletes, hybrid athletes, and people who want to get after it. Uh, once we find that location, we sign this contract, we get the contractors uh, going, We, I'm going to be doing these YouTube videos. I'm going to bring you guys along and I'm going to show you guys the facility and we're going to, you're going to see from the time that we sign the contract to the where the facility is until the build up to the facility to the grand opening. And you guys can uh, rest assured that we're going to have a two to three day uh, weekend uh, opening where we're going to host multiple events that you guys can win free supplements, free apparel, uh, have fun together. We're going to cater food and we're just going to have a good time as a community. And I will make sure I put that out on the gram, on the YouTube so that you guys can make time and come down and join me on this awesome event. I think you guys will have a great time. Can't wait for all the things that we're gonna be doing for you guys. So thank you guys. I'm gonna be doing uh, more of these Q and A's. So if you guys have any freaking questions, drop them down in the comments, like and subscribe. Or next time when I post on the IG story, just jump on and just post your questions. I would love to answer your questions. You could be about anything, right? Just don't let it be anything fucking stupid.